Hello everyone. In this presentation, we are going to learn about another B complex vitamin B3, niacin. As usual, you are going to learn under these headings, sources, recommended daily allowance, active forms, functions and deficiency disorder. So this niacin is synonymous with another name, nicotinic acid and also nicotinamide, nicotinamide. They are derivatives. Okay. Coming to sources of niacin or vitamin B3. So richest source is usually dried yeast and meat, liver, even fish, legumes, so and so. So these are the some of good sources of vitamin niacin. You need to remember about especially for niacin. Niacin is not only has a dietary source, it can be synthesized in our body. So during the definition of vitamins or introductory lecture, I told generally vitamins cannot be synthesized by the body, but this is an exception where our body can synthesize niacin from an amino acid called tryptophan. From this amino acid, our body can synthesize niacin. Okay. So about 60 milligram of tryptophan after complete metabolization can give 1 milligram of niacin. 1 milligram of niacin. That means whatever diet required requirement, 10% is our body can synthesize this niacin from this tryptophan. So this is with respect to sources. Coming to recommended dietary allowance, recommended dietary allowance or daily allowance. It's about 15 to 20 milligram per day. 15 to 20 milligram per day. Daily requirement is around 15 to 20 milligram per day. What are the active forms? So active forms or coenzyme forms of vitamin B3 or niacin. There are two active forms. Okay, one is NAD plus. Another one is. NADP plus. Okay. What is the meaning of this? NAD plus means nicotinamide, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, dinucleotide. Similarly, NADP it means nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, phosphate. So totally there are two active forms of vitamin niacin. NAD plus and NADP plus. They can accept one full hydrogen atom. They can accept one full hydrogen atom and they can accept one electron because already there is a proton, there is NAD plus. They can accept, suppose NAD plus accepts one electron and one hydrogen atom. So it will become NADH plus H plus. Okay. That means similarly NADP plus can accept one full hydrogen atom. That means one proton and one electron and also as well as one electron. This is with respect to source, daily requirement and active forms. So now we will concentrate on functions of vitamin niacin. We all studied riboflavin. Similarly niacin also required for oxidation and reduction reaction. So we know that oxidation reduction reaction can be in carbohydrate metabolism or protein metabolism or even lipid metabolism. If you take NAD, NAD plus, so this active form of niacin is required for oxidative pathway. Oxidative pathway. Oxidative pathway means usually catabolic pathway that is in the TCA cycle or in the glycolysis. Even we can see in lipid metabolism also. Whereas NADP plus is involved in reductive pathway, reductive or synthetic pathway, synthesis pathway like for example cholesterol synthesis or fatty acid synthesis. All this synthesis pathway requires NADP plus. Whereas oxidative pathway that means catabolic pathway like citric acid cycle or TCA cycle or glycolysis, we use NAD plus. That means NAD plus active form of niacin will be utilized. 
to give a specific example of functions of niacin we already gave this example in thiamine and riboflavin as usual pyruvate will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a enzyme is we already know pyruvate dehydrogenase complex okay so here nad will be utilized okay they will accept one one hydrogen and one electron so it will be converted to nadh plus h plus okay since there is already a positive charge it can accept only one electron so again one more hydrogen so it will become nadh the another positive the proton will be released into the medium okay this is the specific example similarly if you want to take example of reductive pathway so here cholesterol synthesis fatty acid synthesis even hmp pathway hmp scent pathway there also there is nadp plus is utilized i'll give one example for this particular reaction so in the cholesterol synthesis there is one reaction called hmg coa it will be converted to mavalonic acid or mavalonate so in this particular reaction hmg coa is converted to mavalonate this mavalonate by series of reaction many reaction it will be converted to cholesterol so this is actually anabolism not the oxidative pathway this is the reductive pathway or synthetic pathway in this reaction nadp will be utilized nadp will be converted to nadph plus h plus so this is the difference between two active form of vitamin niacin nad plus and nad p plus okay this is for oxidative pathway this is for reductive synthesis pathway especially for the synthesis of cholesterol fatty acid even hmp scent pathway which is a small pathway in a carbohydrate metabolism where ribose uh, synthesized that will be utilized for dna so these are the functions apart from this niacin also helps in dna repair mechanism okay whenever there is a damage so there will be some group of enzymes and proteins for this particular metabolic reaction this niacin acts as a coenzyme for many enzymes okay that helps in dna repair these are the two important functions of niacin quickly we will go on to see the deficiency disorders or manifestations of niacin okay niacin deficiency is called pellagra pellagra those who are suffering from pellagra the deficiency manifestation of skin gastrointestinal tract and central nervous system suppose if skin is affected it will lead to dermatitis gastrointestinal tract involvement is to diarrhea central nervous system dementia so dementia means altered sensorium okay there will be forgetfulness or loss of memory okay confusion so this is called dementia alter sensorium confusion forgetfulness diarrhea may be mild or severe depending upon the deficiency of niacin and skin infection dermatitis okay so 3d so the features of pellagra is 3d diarrhea dermatitis dementia so if not treated it will lead to 4d that is death fourth d that is death we know that the sources of niacin is not only from dietary source our body can synthesize niacin from tryptophan so here the deficiency disorder of niacin is pellagra pellagra not only even if you have sufficient amount of dietary niacin person can suffer from pellagra because maybe there may be a disorder related to tryptophan so there is one genetic disorder genetic disorder called hartnup disease hartnup disease okay so then hartnup disease will be defect in the absorption of tryptophan defect in absorption when we say absorption it is mainly from the git or there may be defect in the transportation this is all genetic disorder or there may be defect in the reabsorption so reabsorption means in the kidney tube that means whatever amino acid is filtered in the 
Bowman's capsule, it all amino acid will be absorbed back. For that also there may be particular transporter, there may be genetic disorder or defect of tryptophan absorption, transportation and reabsorption that leads to heart pump disease. Even though person may be taking sufficient amount of niacin, but they, he can suffer from pellagra due to genetic disorder. Last point, apart from deficiency disorder, this niacin in the form of nicotinic acid, this is use or uh, one of the use of niacin. It can be used to treat hyper hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia, okay. Like if it is high cholesterol, cholesterol. So where we can use nicotinic acid, it is one of the lipid lowering drug. One of the lipid lowering drug, which is nicotinic acid. So the mechanism of action actually it inhibits lipolysis. It inhibits lipolysis of adipose tissue. So if adipose tissue, adipose tissue, if there is inhibition of lipolysis, that means there is decrease in the free fatty acid transport to liver. So there will not be hyperlipidemia. Okay, this is one of the use of nicotinic acid. It can be used to treat those who are having high cholesterol level, even LDL and VLDL level or high lipids. Okay, this is another use. Thanks for watching.